Okay, so if you've followed my videos for a while now, you'll know that I have a bit of a thing for selections and cutouts. So in this video, I wanna show you another little trick for making your selections look so much better. Plus, I've got a secret tip to share with you. Now, I'm going to show you this technique on this deer picture, and this is a picture that I've used in a recent video where I went through how you can use a brush to fake a cutout. If you've not seen it, you can click on the banner appearing at the top of the screen to watch it now, or just wait until the end of the video and I'll add a thumbnail that you can just simply click on. So what exactly is this technique? Well, on screen you can see that I've got an active selection that I've made of this deer. All I've done at this stage is just use the quick selection tool. So when I zoom in, you can see that there is definitely a little bit more that I need to do where I need to pick up all these extra fine hairs that the quick selection tool isn't able to do. Now I'm currently using the current version of Photoshop. This is now January 2017 and you can see from the top of the screen here that I'm using Adobe Photoshop CC 2017. And what we have available to us with this version is what's called Select and Mask. This is from a recent update where Adobe have updated Refine Edge and given us this Select and Mask. You can see in the options bar at the top of the screen, when I click on that, we get a much bigger dialog box with much more sliders and a few little different options over on the left-hand side as well. Now, I've gotta be honest with you, and just between me and you, I'm not really a big fan of using Select and Mask, and I do know a few friends as well that are of the same opinion. I loved Refine Edge. I thought that just did an absolute treat when it came to picking up all those fine hairs when making selections. However, all is not lost if you've now got the update. You're not just stuck with Select and Mask. Let me just cancel and come out of here. Now this is something that a friend of mine, Colin Smith, who runs Photoshop Cafe, I'll put a details of him and links to his stuff in the description part of this video, but Colin revealed a little trick that you can do to bring back Refine Edge. The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna to go to the Select menu at the top of the screen, and then we can see here we've got the option to go into Select and Mask, but rather than just clicking on it, hold down your Shift key and then click on it. And then what you're gonna get is Refine Edge. Good old Refine Edge is back. So now we can carry on using what we used to using. And if we're honest, what did a pretty good job anyway. So a huge thanks to Colin for that one. All is not lost, we still have Refine Edge. So now that we're in Refine Edge, what I'm gonna do is just use the edge detection tool, which is on by default, just to pick up some of the extra hairs that we couldn't get with the first pass when we used the quick selection tool to make the selection of the deer. Now I would ordinarily go all the way around the deer to pick up all the hairs, but just for speed and just to show you this tech nice and quickly, we'll stick to this one area of the deer just on the main here. And this is where there's a majority of all those fine hairs. And you can see just with one simple pass there, it seems like it's done a really good job. So what I'll now do is send this image out of Refine Edge and back into Photoshop so I could then carry on with my compositing. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to the output menu at the bottom of the Refine Edge properties here, and where it says selection, I'm gonna choose new layer with layer mask, and then click OK. And that'll then send it back over into Photoshop. Now, at this stage, it's pretty difficult to see exactly what we're working with here because of this transparent layer, this transparent checkerboard here. So what I'm gonna do is just add a color below it just so it makes things much clearer. To do that, I'm gonna to go to the layer menu, choose new fill layer and solid color. I'll give it a name, something like sky. We'll click OK. We're gonna get the color picker and I'm just gonna use a very desaturated lightish kind of uh, blue color, something like that'll be fine. Click OK, I'm just gonna drag it then below the deer. Now you don't, you don't need to do that, I'm purely doing it so that you can see nice and clearly what we've got here to work with. So when I zoom in, you can see what initially looked like a really good selection of picking up all these fine hairs. It isn't quite as good as what we first thought. And sure, yeah, it's done a pretty good job. It's managed to pick up some of those hairs, but it actually starts to look a little bit crispy. The hair it's picked up is a lot lighter. I think Refiner just struggled with it just a little bit because the contrast was very, very low maybe in this particular area. And it definitely needs some kind of improvement. We've got what we call fringing. So here's how we can get rid of it. Well, in fact, 
The video at the end of this, uh, the little thumbnail at the end of this video, if you click on that, I've got one technique you can use using brushes to maybe uh, fake the look of making look, this look better than it is. But here's another way using the clone stamp tool. And this is really useful when you have this particular fringing where you can see some of the hairs there, but they're really, really light in color. Now to do this, what we first of all need to do is click on the layer that contains our cutout. Then I'm gonna add a new blank layer to the top of the layer stack. I'm gonna call this one hair. So that's the first thing we need to do. Then I'm gonna to go to the toolbar and choose the clone stamp tool or just press S on the keyboard, which is the keyboard shortcut. Now, when we use a tool in Photoshop, each tool has its own set of options that we can actually uh, alter to uh, change how the actual tool behaves. And the clone stamp tool here, we can see the options at the top. There's a couple of changes we need to make. The first one is where it says sample. Now, I've got mine set to current and below. The reason for that is that I want to use a blank layer to do my cloning on so that it's non-destructive. If I try to clone on a blank layer, well, there's nothing that I can sample to clone from. So I need to tell Photoshop to look below this layer to where you will find pixels. So by me using current and below, that's what Photoshop will do. So it looks through the hair layer, it sees the deer layer below it, and it can then use the clone stamp tool absolutely fine. So that's that what we need to do there. The next thing we need to do is where it says mode. Now ordinarily that's gonna be set to normal. Now we're gonna change it to darken and I'll explain why in just a moment. So we change the mode to darken, set the sample there to current and below. The final thing that we need to do with this hair layer, we're gonna create what's called a clipping mask. The clipping mask basically means that whatever appears on this hair layer is only visible on the visible parts of the layer below. Now we're gonna be cloning to make this hair, this fringing hair look better. So we only want the cloning to appear on the hair. So by me adding a clipping mask, it's only gonna be visible on that hair as opposed to appearing all over the background. And I'll kind of explain that a little bit more as we go through this. But to add a clipping mask, all I need to do is put my cursor in between the hair layer and this deer copy layer, then hold down my Option key on Mac or Alt key on PC, and then click. And you'll see that the little thumbnail icon here moves over to the right-hand side, and we get this little downward-facing arrow, which is telling us that this layer is now a clipping mask. So now that we've got that set up, let's come over to the deer itself. I'm using my clone stamp tool and I'm gonna sample some of the hair on the deer's mane here, not the fringing, just a little bit further in. To sample it, I hold down my Option key or Alt key, depending if I'm working on Mac or PC, and then we click to sample it into Photoshop's memory like so. And then all I'm going to do is brush over the hair on the actual uh, mane that's got this fringing. And you'll notice that it's actually starting to darken it down. Now, because we use this darken blend mode, all that's happening here is the area that I sampled is quite dark. So when I bring my clone stamp tool over the fringing, Photoshop will only add the cloning onto the areas that are lighter than where I initially cloned. So it's not just gonna clone over everything, it's only gonna clone over the light parts of the fringing. So that's a really great way of controlling where that cloning appears. And you can see I've only done a very, very quick pass here, but if I turn that layer on and off, you can see the difference that's making already. It's worth bearing in mind that you're never gonna get a perfect selection. But what we can do in Photoshop is use the tools available to us to make the selections look as good as possible. And in the case of that brush technique that you can catch at the end of this video, we can also fake cutouts so that they look better than they really are. Now let's just zoom out just a touch. And you can see now we go from before with that really light fringing to there where we have much, much hair visible. So it's actually improving the look of the actual uh, mane and all the hair that we've picked up just there as well. So I would probably do that going all the way around the deer, especially on the tail where we picked up some of that fringing. And hopefully then we've got managed to get another great looking cutout. And this is just another tool that you can add into your Photoshop toolbox. So that's pretty much it. Make sure that you click on the little thumbnail at the end of the video here to watch that extra one if you haven't seen it already. 
But there you go, that's all from me. Make sure that um, if you haven't already, you subscribe to this video so that you don't miss out on any new videos that are, are posted. I try to do them once every week. Don't miss out on any of those. And also, you know, I'd really appreciate it if you could think about sharing this video and maybe sharing details of the channel with other people that you know would really like to benefit from a lot of the free content that I post out there. And of course, if you're a member of my newsla uh, newsletter, my mailing group, you're also gonna be able to have access to the files that I use in the videos so that you don't just have to watch them, you can also follow along. And that is definitely the best way to learn. But for now, that's all from me. I'll catch you next time.